Yeah, well, next up we have Daniel Waterman, and honestly, probably one of the strongest athletes in, in Australia to date. Uh, last year we had a kind of Ninja World Cup at the end of the year, and Dan Waterman was the first Ninja to complete stage three. Um, in, in just kind of in general of any competition that we've ever had. No one's ever completed stage three. Oh, wow. And Well, he yeah, got uh, how... too excited and tried to do the salmon ladder there. Instead, he would do the much easier <laughs> spine runner. Yeah, we can but see I, him I, setting a great time. I can't time, say yeah. we've uh, even had anyone out on this spine runner. Look at this pace on the cliffhanger. That's one of the fastest cliffhangers I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, Dan Waterman is going for that top time. He's trying to put the pressure on these later competitors. He's just, yeah. Just all around, such a strong athlete. Alex, oh, he's going straight for the top. Yeah, might as well. And this is going to be a tremendous time by Daniel, only using half of his time limit, not even giving us a minute to breathe. 42 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, similar to the Millie Baker run that we saw in the teen division, he really just took that run by storm. We're getting a little bit of a replay from a John Thompson here, but hopefully we can go across to the Dan Waterman run. I think that just really, you know, here it is. if you blink and you miss it, really. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be one for the highlight reel hopefully and i think if there's one person that's gonna do it is daniel waterman he justified his place in the placement course setting an exceptional time of around 40 seconds and just kind of fell short of the other two competitors uh, gav wilson and tex gallagher but he is going to be looking to go all the way a really good kindred spirited competitor always down for a laugh always there to compete and have a good time but also just kind of win I, th I think that's what daniel knows best Certainly true, but needs to be careful on this balance beam. There we go. It's Setting always balanced. A faster time. It's always yeah. balance. Takes out the best of the best. Yeah, if, if, if you kids at home are thinking, you know, I got to train the next big upper body move, train your balance. Don't forget about leg day. Don't skip yeah. leg day. Well, Daniel Waterman is strong on all fronts. In particular, the power to rate, weight ratio is going to be his biggest strength as he comes in through heavy hatchets with no troubles whatsoever. But we're now Alex through. stepping up. To uh, maybe oh. maybe not. Now breezing through, and that is the fastest time that we have seen through heavy hatchets today, meaning Daniel Waterman has secured his spot in the top four. Now the business of beating some uncharted waters. Yeah, this is the obstacle that's taken out all the competitors so far, except for Cody Thomas. Can Daniel Waterman make it through? Yes, he can. Okay, there's the first bit done. He's just got to stick this dismount. This is the big one. Gets it. <laughs> Although he's spun up. Might want to think about going for the claw. He does. And he's out of there. Okay. And plenty of time to beat Stepasaurus in vertical limits. Yeah, Alex, this obstacle took us by surprise. Having those vertical limits as just singular holds um, that don't have much grip to them. Daniel moving through the Stepasaurus well so far, but this is the vertical limit. This one's going to burn you. I think he's realizing that just... that is going to be tough to hang on from one hand, but look at <sighs> how easily he just did that. I think he might. Yeah, he's looking for that second oh grab. Oh my gosh. Oh my that gosh. That is too easy for him. Unreal. Yeah, Daniel Waterman solidifying the top time to this point so far, and that will put him into the top spot. But with a minute 30 on the clock, there is still potential to pe beat these last three obstacles. And not but a single this... retry used also. Yeah, this is the obstacle in his way, Alex. This took out Cody Thomas, one of the best of the best. Oh, look at this. He's going to Daniel... try to skip the dovetail, go for the trapeze, and he's got it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Alright, well, Cody's I don't think we're going to see much of the dovetail tonight. <laughs> no, I think the other ninjas are looking at that and being like, yeah, I'm going to skip that. And now coming into the salmon ladder, Alex, we could see our first finish. Yeah, this Dan is Waterman. the same salmon ladder that we saw the amateurs and teens beat earlier. Yeah, Daniel Waterman's done this a million times over. As long as he doesn't make any mistakes here and doesn't gas out, he can get this done. Kane was the one who and tipped me off to how good this kid is. And Kane is proving right so far. Big skip downwards might just go from here. And he does. He's 32 seconds, raising his hand in victory. Daniel Waterman with not a blemish beating this entire course that we didn't think was possible. Yeah, just all around uh, an exceptional run. You cannot fault the man. He has just delivered time after time, season after season, and coming into one of the toughest courses we have ever seen. 
He has aced through the vertical limits and then learned from Cody's mistakes and gone for that skip. Uh, just again, the benefit of going later in these runs. Placement course, so important. Even if it doesn't count for results, it is so important because ultimately it kind of does. Once yeah, you see it, how your fellow competitors can take on some of the toughest obstacles in our sport.